All right, get a uh, quick read going, in Mike? here. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tournament. Major League Baseball, the NBA, NHL, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and make your first bet a big-time win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Jay, you alluded to this earlier, and I saw some discourse on Twitter over this, this weekend, which is kind of what led to this conversation I want to ask you guys about. And like I said earlier, G. Bush was uh, kind of the intended audience or one of the three intended audiences I wanted to ask. But there are going to be some people who don't like Deshaun Watson for whatever reason. Does that make you a bad Browns fan if you don't like Deshaun Watson? Or I'll start with you. Does it make you a bad Browns fan if you don't like Deshaun Watson? Yes. No, it doesn't make you a bad Browns fan if you don't like Deshaun Watson. But if you're a person that because you don't like Deshaun Watson, you really kind of like root for him not to be successful, that's what make you a bad Browns fan. Because ultimately, Deshaun Watson's success is tied into the Cleveland Browns team success. And if you truly are a diehard fan of the Cleveland Browns and you want to see the Cleveland Browns win a Super Bowl, then you're going to have to get behind a guy that you might not like personally for your professional interest. And that's just the bottom line. It ain't, this ain't hard to figure out. You can deal with people that you don't like for the greater good, that we do that every day in America. You better be able to deal with You have to. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Jay, what's your answer to that? Uh, no, I don't think it makes you a bad fan at all. You know, it's funny because I was thinking about when I found out at 938 that was coming on today, <laughs> I hurried up and grabbed the rundown. I'm like, well, what are we talking about today? Because I don't look at the rundown if I'm not on the show. And when I saw this topic, I th the first thing actually I thought was, I know many, many people in my life who feel like I don't care about your political views. I don't care about your religious views. I want you to entertain me. That's all I want you to do. So if you think that way, if you're the one of those people that think that way, you probably also can't then say that you care about his off field stuff. Like it's all in the same bucket. If you don't care about their political beliefs, then you probably shouldn't care about that. And you fall into the category of, I just want you to entertain me. But I also know, and I've heard from so many people that say, I am a lifelong Browns fan and I feel emotionally detached from this team now. I just can't get there. I can't get there with I've them. heard I've heard that a lot too. Yeah, and I don't I don't I don't blame you. No. Like you're you're entitled to that. Like it's I don't hold anyone against against like it, there's some rough stuff there. I, I have a question for you Mike. Did you ask this question because you thought G Bush would say yes, you're a bad Browns fan if you don't no. like Deshaun Watson? No, I just know G comes at it from the most like innermost fan perspective. Absolutely. So, you know, I am curious now to know what his answer would be. Because I thought when you said you put this in specifically for G Bush, I thought you already had some inkling that G Bush was going to say yes. No, no, I have no idea okay. what his answer. I just know he comes from like when we were at the Super Bowl and he said, I can't watch the Browns in the Super Bowl with anyone because I'm going to cry the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I would like to <clears throat> talk to someone that said, I, I don't know who they are or where you saw them. It was, I mean, it, if Some you saw it on, on Twitter, Twitter yeah, it's like, like here's Chef the mistake Day, we yeah. make. You know, Twitter's saying, well, Twitter has never said anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was a back and forth on Twitter from a bunch of people. Which no, was like, I get right, that. It's worth asking the but, question. But, to so you. here's the other mistake that we make oftentimes is to say, what's well, all over Twitter? Is it? I'm guilty. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm, I'm guilty see, of that. See, here's the thing. What we see on Twitter is a very small section of what's on Twitter. It's called algorithm. <laughs> Absolutely. And like we're seeing things that we have selectively opted into. Yeah, it's yeah. an echo chamber. It is an echo chamber. And the danger of society, not just with sports fans, but the danger of society and politicians have flamed out massively because they've looked at Twitter mm -hmm. and they try to base the pulse of the country off the pulse of a few. It can't be done. So you know, now look. If, I love Twitter. I got my current job because of Twitter. The <laughs> athletic hired me because of Twitter. You're probably I'm not right. kidding. No, listen. There are <laughs> there are people that are working upstairs in the Channel Three newsroom that are working because of their social media following. Yes. Both of you a question. Sure. Uh, and this is based off you know people, you both said that people find it hard to be emotionally invested, and I'm just asking because at this time I was still just a casual fan. I hadn't started this journey. We all know what Kareem Hunt did. Never mind what he was accused of. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw it. In his we know, case, we, we know what yeah. he did. Yeah. Was there that same sense when it, when John Dorsey went out and signed Kareem Hunt? There was that, backlash, but like, not as much 
Am I right? Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I, yeah, it's hard to gauge. Not There's a difference much, to Kareem Hunt from Cleveland. Right. So there are a lot of people, I right. think, that were more willing to forgive him. The point I'm making is everybody got a different moral compass. Everybody have different things that are triggered. Sure. Them, right? And yeah. so, like, to me, you know, my, my, man, you don't put your hands on a woman. Never. Right? You don't put your hands on a woman. Under any circumstances. I don't care what's what. And it just seems like that people have been more triggered over allegations because of whatever Versus, I think it was the number of allegations. Yes. Yeah, that ver- was troubling. Yes. If it was one, two, or three women, I think it would have been fine. When it was in the 20s, I think there were people going, oh, no, no, I, that's just too much. And so me. this is just me just asking this question because, again, moral compass. I seen somebody that, and I respect and I like Kareem Hunt as, as a man and as a player, but right. that's not cool. You know what right. I'm saying? That, Absolutely. That's, I, I got daughters, bro, yep. under no circumstances is that cool. Yep. And so I was just curious because you all were in the business like what was the temperature when the cleveland brown signed kareem hunt there was pushback there was pushback remember he was for a minute blackballed and he wasn't out for very long it's not like he was out long enough to learn any lessons or make any sort of but but then you can also look at ray rice now granted what ray did was i mean the circumstances i took into account the circumstances around kareem hunt these were women that were thrown out of his hotel room uh for Parts of his group felt they had nefarious intentions. The, they came back. There was the altercation. We saw that on videotape. What I saw on videotape from Ray froze me in my tracks. Yeah. I'd never seen anything like that. Yeah. I was literally like I needed a standing eight count. I was taken aback because I'm with you. I'm a girl dad. Laying hands on a female, I, I just... I, you wanted to go fight Ray Rice yourself. I just, and I knew and liked Ray Rice. <laughs> yeah. He had been a member... Uh, he had uh, been a, a, a guest on, on our show on multiple occasions, and he was strongly entrenched in the Friends of Show category. We could call Ray at any time. Ray was polite. He was courteous. He was all these things. The reason I personally was so thunderstruck, I knew Ray. I thought I knew his character. Ray was a Rutgers guy. My son was at Rutgers at the time. Mm-hmm. Corey had run-ins with, not run-ins, but interactions with Ray. His impressions were the same as mine. I had never heard anyone utter a negative word about Ray Rice. And I see this video and I'm like, everything I thought I knew is wrong. And I understand that things happen in spur of the moments and some of it's spontaneous and out of your control. I just, for me, that was the unforgivable sin. With Deshaun, I think there were people, I know them in my work circle upstairs that were lifelong Browns fans Mm -hmm. that say they've now picked other teams. They actively root for other teams. They don't root against the Browns or they don't root against Deshaun, but they've said, I cannot root for this team. I cannot co-sign what this team has done. Okay, that's your choice. For me, I do mental gymnastics. My fandom is so strong, I cannot not root for the team. That doesn't mean I have to root for the player. But yeah. like you said, if you root against that player, <laughs> then you're in competing factions. So for me, anybody that would ask that question, I would answer that with another question. Does it make you a bad Browns fan if you didn't like Baker Mayfield? It's got to go both ways. Hmm. Does it? And ultimately, no. I, the answer to that is a resounding no and no. I don't have to personally like all 53 guys. I mean, Indians fans hated Eric Plunk back in the 90s. You remember that? (laughs) (laughs) When he came in, I turned off the TV. Me? Because I said, I don't watch the end of a movie that I know how it's going to end. I, I Particularly if the leading character dies, I Listen, know how this ends. I really, I, it's a good point. There's a, on every team. There's guys. There's that, going to be guys, you, guys don't you don't like. like. This yeah. is, I've never once, and I hate when people do this. Do not question someone's fandom. Do not question someone's fandom. That's up to them. It's not up to me. What am I to judge? The God judge of all fans. You're a nine. You're a one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a yeah. negative four. You know, like it, it's that's that's a personal preference. That's like saying I like pizza. Yeah. Okay. If someone comes up and says I don't like pizza, yeah. cool. I can't argue with your taste buds. So if you don't like Baker Mayfield, but you love and root for the Browns, you're a good fan. Here's what makes you a bad fan. If because you don't like said player, you are then rooting actively 
Not that it affects the outcome because we know it doesn't. But if you're, I can't watch a game with someone who's going to root against Baker Mayfield when he's a Browns player or root against Deshaun Watson. For better or worse, he's ours. And it's like family. We don't selectively kick members of our family out we don't like. They're still family. Deshaun Watson is still family. We don't have to co-sign everything he does. There are a lot of guys in this league that a lot of the fan base can't co-sign what they do. Sure. That's not what this is about. I loved your point about political. Like, we can separate the, the artist from the art. I don't have to not root for someone because they're this way politically. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Yeah. Entertain me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whatever comments you make politically, I don't have to consume. Right. I don't have to follow you on social media. I don't have to see any of your opinions that I disagree with. But here's what I need from you. Effort for three hours on Sunday. Yeah. And it, so it, you, <laughs> it doesn't make you a bad fan if you don't like Deshaun Watson. Right. I'm sorry. Right. But if you root against Deshaun Watson while he's wearing an orange helmet, that makes you a bad fan. You know, these conversations to me are very interesting. We clearly are. We, we don't look alike. We come from different times in life. Our experiences are different. And so when I seen this in the rundown, I knew this would be a healthy conversation. And I'm with dudes that I consider friends and family. Mm-hmm. You said something, and I'm going to tell you this, what you just said, like he's family. He belongs to us. He's ours. That's how black people feel about Deshaun Watson. And so when you see people triggered. Well, I feel that way about but Deshaun just, Watson. Just, though, I, no, I need you to hear me out. Yeah. I, I need you all to hear this. Okay. I don't think anybody has ever felt like that he's never did anything wrong, right? I don't think people ever felt like that everything is just A-OK. Right. But because of the history of this country, right, and people are quick to compare to other people of other races who have done things similar, worse, et cetera, you know? And so people of color, they tend to be like, I'm not saying he was not wrong, but you got to chill out on how you beating up on him because he belonged to us. Sure. So I'm not saying he was wrong, but y'all got to chill. Let us handle this in-house. And so when you said that, that's what it made me think of. And y'all know me. I don't really have these conversations. Yeah. I'm just giving you an honest opinion. That's how black people feel about Deshaun Watson. That's really interesting that it you is. put it that way because I, I, I mean, obviously I'm not going to, hey, you're black, I'm not. <laughs> right. What you say goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't talk someone out of what they like and don't like. But it's funny you put it that way because one day, because we all know Garrett was so just so defensive over Deshaun, and one day we were having a similar conversation, and I said, gee, do you, ever, do you think he did anything wrong? Because I don't know if I've ever heard you answer that. And he said, yeah, I, I think he did. And, and so it's exactly what you just said. We're not saying he's innocent or he's not guilty of anything, but he's still one of us and we got to love him and protect him. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. And, and look, and I'm I was just black. giving you. I, I do was, look at yeah. Sean Watson though his family. Yeah. Because he's in the family that I am a member of that tribe. Yeah. I, I, I'm a Brown. Whether, what, and, and I'll be a Brown until my death. And, and like I said, because I know G, like G is more triggered than I am behind stuff like that. But I'm just telling you, like, and it don't have to be Deshaun Watson that we're talking about. Yeah. Right. It can be anybody from anything like, you know, right now, this, this big thing about Diddy, you got half the people who's w- willing to convict him right now. And you got other people that's willing to say that, you know, I ain't saying this, that, and the third, but chill out right yeah, now. Yeah. Right. People are sensitive to certain things when it comes from certain people. And I understand that's that, and that's fair. And, and I think it's, it's that's not just a trait of a black person. Right. I think that there was some ownership and racial divide with Baker, where a lot of white guys were just like, hey, he's white, I'm going to support him for whatever reason. The thing that I have a problem with with Deshaun Watson is, and, I, and I'm not just saying this because I try to be as objective as I can on this. I'm not just saying this because I'm a Browns fan. I don't think the punishment fit the crime. I just don't. Now, what is the crime? Well, crime is determined by the judicial system. And by that standard, no crime was committed. So why was there such a punitive punishment? Why was it 11 games? Why? Because it's also the other part about this is the scarlet letter that he has to wear now forever. Mm-hmm. Whether he, he was not convicted, he was not charged with crimes. But the man will always wear a scarlet letter, and you will, in the first paragraph of his retirement story, it will read somewhere in there, 
He served an 11 game suspension for accusations by 26 women of sexual abuse. Well, he wears that now forever, yeah. and I think that's not fair. I mean, Trevor Bauer is suspended. 1,000% yeah. agree with that, 190, too. 194 and games. likely will be blackballed oh. by an entirely and it's totally unfair. 1,000% totally unfair. unfair. Because you know, there, now, in his case, there were criminal charges, I believe, that were filed, but he has not been indicted. He has not been convicted yeah, of anything. It's 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 so hard for me. I'm I'm probably not going to word this right. It's hard for me. Like, yes, the judicial system determines whether you're guilty or innocent, or whether you're, you know, you're cleared or you're not. It's really guilty or not guilty. But yes, that's I what shouldn't it say determines. Innocent, guilty or not guilty. But there's still there's still gray. There's still gray area. There is. And we all just said, do you think Deshaun Watson did anything wrong? I think that what happened between Deshaun Watson and a number of his masseuse was sexual activity. However, I don't believe any of it was forced on Deshaun's part. He may have been doing a lot of things that were insinuating he wanted some sort of sexual contact, but I don't believe that Deshaun Watson held anyone down or forced someone to do something that they did not want to do. Yeah, That's just held, my belief. I don't think he physically held anyone down. When I read, I mean, it wasn't even just 26. When you read the New York Times story of 60 and 70 women with allegations, I don't believe 60 and 70 women conspired against this man. I don't believe that. I don't believe that either. That's so, why I believe there was a pattern of uncomfortable actions taken yes. on the behalf of Deshaun Watson. Some women, I think, returned with actions of their own that, that were answering his precipit, you know, what, what he was yeah. precipitating. I also think that there were a number of women that he started, he started doing things that were, would be considered unprofessional in a professional massage setting. And they were like, oh no, I'm out. Yeah. That is too much for me. I say this. And to, that, it, that's also offensive, but is it illegal behavior? To get back to the, you know, like, don't like part of it. You know, my brother tells me all the time, I tend to project how I am and how I was raised on other people. My father always told me, how the hell can you sit up there and say you don't like somebody that you don't know personally, right? Yeah. And I notice I do that in real life. I can be amongst friends and you know, people be like, talk about the show and they say, well, I don't like this person. I don't like that person on the show. And I would say, to my knowledge, you've never met said person. Right. You might not like their take. You might not like how they go about things. But how can you honestly say you don't like somebody that you never interacted with, that never disrespected you personally, that never has done anything to you? And my brother says, you know, that's that's projecting. That's how you are. That's how you feel. And he's right. I tend to project in that way a little bit. And so, like, when these questions come up, I love these conversations because me personally, I have a hard time saying verbatim, I don't like somebody and I've never met this person. Sure. Me and this person, they never have a well, conversation. Well, in reality, all, and, and some of us here, like I've met Deshaun Watson, but I don't, I've never interacted I don't know with him like, on anything other yeah. than a right. professional basis. Right. I don't know him. Right. And so what also, I, I, that leads me to lean on people that do. And all of the people that I've leaned on, that I know, that know him, have said the same thing. This is not his character. He is a good human being. Kind, decent, respectful. So that's what I'm left with. Yeah. And I so, can't cast judgment. Again, I, I, I take the same approach that I would in my everyday life. You know, I, I go out of here and people like to inter talk, interact and they want to know things behind the scenes and people have conversations. I don't like this person. Yeah. To, I know you. I know for a fact that you've never met this man. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. how can you say that? And sure. I just think like, you know, maybe it comes from years of working in a courtroom tied into how I was raised. Yeah. Like Judge Patton, man, shout out to Judge Patton. He used to tell me all the time, man, everything that you say matters, everything you don't say matter. And when you say out your mouth, you don't like somebody, I automatically go back to my upbringing. My father always told me, you, how you like somebody that you, that you don't even know? Yeah. And how well, do you dislike someone? That and you that's don't. why you need to let athletes like entertain you. That's why you need to let musicians entertain you that's why you need to let actors and actresses just entertain you like we get caught up in we everything look outside of the compass. entertainment but here's the last thing i guess i would say on it is you guys have met my middle son aj he is a massive browns fan he's 13 he's almost 14 years old massive browns fan like was emotionally distraught after the houston game and i'm like buddy you got to get a handle on this i went through those years my, with my wife was son. texting me because i was in houston saying he's out of, he just he's losing his mind he has a closet full of Browns jerseys. You name it, he's got their jersey. Yeah. Except 
I won't buy him a Deshaun jersey. I can't get You've there. made that decision I've as a parent. I've made that decision as yeah. a parent. I will not buy him a Deshaun jersey. I can't get there. Interesting. And Would that's he wear just, one? I, he's never asked for one. That's interesting. He's that's never telling. asked for it. And, and if, he if, knows. If he's he would, old enough. He knows what's up. And yeah. he, have, he and I have had conversations about girls and about you got to have permission and you can't just go around sure. grabbing girls and kissing girls and all. And, you know, but that's the decision that I have made personally is, and, and my wife's in agreement with me on this. We aren't buying him a Deshaun jersey. Yeah. There's you know plenty what? of other that, jerseys as, for him As to a wear. parent, you have every right to make that decision. And, and I, by I, the way, I was in favor of them pursuing I, him. Here's I the crazy part, because I have daughters, and somebody asked me, they was like, you know, when, when the Browns uh, traded for Deshaun Watson, did you have a conversation with either of your daughters? And I said, no, absolutely not, because I would be dropping the ball as a father if I wasn't having these conversations with my kids by default. Right. I don't need somebody accused of something like yeah. this for me to do my job as a parent and have the proper conversations of with my kids about everything that go out here in the real world. Now, when you're a parent, it's so funny how your view on everything changes. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And you can have the outlook that I, these people just entertain me. At what point, though, do you cross over and let them be role models for your children? That's where it's the conversation. That's where it's different. Very, very interesting. I don't, I don't need an athlete to be a role model. I don't for either. My kids. Me neither. I don't need me them neither. to be a role model. Their role models should be their parents, yep. their teachers, their clergy, if they're religious, you know, their the coaches, people that are in the, the people that, that's, coaches, that's, yeah. that's integrated not somebody that they don't know on TV life. that they root for for three hours a week. We got one super.